I'm going to show you a very cool feature in Blender that will allow you to seamlessly connect the handle to the body of the tumbler. Normally, if you wanted to produce a visual connection with a kind of transition blend between the two objects, you'd need to explicitly model this blend, which could be a bit tedious. By using the data transfer modifier, we can simplify the process. Let's quickly examine the two objects that we're going to be joining together. By the end of this tutorial, we're still going to have two completely separate objects, but we're going to kind of tie them together in a really unique way. They're both polygon objects with a subdivision surface modifier applied, which we can see on each object. And so our starting point is to work with the handle geometry. Let's come in and notice that on the end, it's open. Tab key takes us into edit mode. E key and then Y will come to about here and then press Shift R to do that one more time. Let's come down to the bottom and let's do this. Let's pull this one a little bit closer. It tapers, so we need to pull that a bit closer. E key, Y, about the same, and Shift R. And then what I'm going to do is take and move these so that this endpoint just sort of roughly matches up to the uh, body of the tumbler. Let's come back up to the top and do the same thing here. Get that about, about like that. The first thing that we want to do is let's leave edit mode, add a shrink wrap modifier for the handle. So we'll come over to shrink wrap and we want to tell it to shrink wrap to the body of the tumbler. It's just going to use nearest surface, which essentially takes and projects it in a direction normal to the surface. So each point moves in a normal direction to that surface. Because we've got a cylinder, it's going to kind of deform this, and I don't want that to happen. We want the wrap method to be a projection just along the y-axis, but you'll notice nothing seems to happen now, because right now it's only going in the positive direction which is this direction along y, but we want it to go in the negative direction along y, so we have to specify that. So now we need to limit it only to the perimeter of the connecting part of the handle to the body. So let's come in now and restrict this just to a selection of the vertices that we want to project and not the whole thing. Let's temporarily turn that off. So coming into edit mode, let's double click to select just these perimeter end vertices. And then we're going to come down to data properties and under vertex group, we're going to click to create blend, blend verts one, and then we'll assign those. So let's leave edit mode so we can clearly see what's happening right here. Now, when we come over here and re-enable it, we can come down to the bottom and say, restrict this projection to just the blend verts, and we get that right there. Well, so we're getting it so they're projected on there, but how do we get the blend? So let's actually come back over here and temporarily once again disable this, and let's alter our geometry just a little bit to give more of a blend happening. So let's come back into edit mode, and let's go into edge. We well, we've got edge selected there, so that's good. So let's come back up. We'll do this at, at the top, even though since both are selected, it'll operate on both at the same time. We want to come down to the shrink fatten function, which is also control S. Let's switch over from select box down to active tools. So I can just click, hold and drag, and we're going to pull these out. So we sort of fan them out like that. And then down here at the bottom, we can see it's done essentially the same thing. So let's zoom in and take a look at this. Let's turn back on the shrink wrap modifier in event mode, and we can see it sort of sucked it there to the body of the tumbler. Now I'd like to add a crease here. So let's go back into edit mode, two key, double click this loop, and then come over to mean crease and let's add a one to that. So when I leave edit mode, do you see how it prevented subdivision from passing that boundary? So we have a better concentration of the data here. In fact, let's come up here and take our subdivision to two. So we have a little bit finer 
resolution to work with. So tab, double click, mean crease to one. Okay, so what we want to do is we want this loop here, which is this, to partially be affected by the shrink wrap modifier. So right now the shrink wrap modifier is only affecting these end vertices. And I'd like this to be partially affected, this middle loop. Let's come down here and turn shrink wrap on while we're in edit mode. And we're going to do the same thing here with subdivision surface so we can really see this happening. Let's come over here into vertex mode. This loop is currently completely unaffected when we come down back to vertex group. For blend verts one, let's change the weight assignment to 0.5 and then assign these to be at that 50% influence level. And so they're partially affected by shrink wrap. So let's do the same thing down here at the bottom. Let's take these and also assign these with 50% influence. And those get partially sucked in by the shrink wrap modifier. So let's leave edit mode. We're working on the handle geometry. Let's come back to our modifier and stack. And then let's look at what this looks like in viewport shading. So we come over here and turn that on so we can see a crude representation of the materials. When I deselect the handle, we can clearly see that we have this boundary happening. And this is because the two polygon meshes are completely separate from each other. So there's no way for there in a default state for it to pull shading from one to the next. But if we come back over to the handle, come over to modifier and then edit and then data transfer, we can pull information from one onto the other. So the source object that we're wanting to pull from is the tumbler body. Okay, so that is there. And then we want to restrict this to the vertex group that we've actually been deforming using the shrink wrap. So we're gonna come over here to blend verts one, and we're gonna pull normal information. So we're gonna pull face corner data. And what that is, is it's essentially just going to look at the mesh, the polygon mesh, look at the vertex information for the polygon structure. And for vertices that are quite close to this, it's going to pull that vertex information to produce shading for that boundary. So we want to use custom normals. And then the mode, each of these modes is a slightly different way of figuring out how to pull normal information. So let's come down to projected face interpolated. And when we look at this, we can see that there's some kind of funky stuff going on here. But take note, we no longer see that boundary. So if we come up to the top, we can see that we no longer see that boundary right there. So it's pulling normal information and embedding it, applying it to that perimeter set of vertices. Well, we need to figure out how to solve this. And it turns out the way that we can do this is by coming back in. Let's select this perimeter, which is the only place where we want normal information to get pulled and applied. Let's come back down to our vertex groups. We're going to create a new vertex group that we will call blend verts two. Make sure we have a weight of one and assign these to that group. So now let's come back over here. Let's leave edit mode. Let's come back over and we want to tell it to use a vertex group of that blend two. And then we get the proper shading and look at that it produces that nice smooth blend. So let's take a look at this really quick. If we come into edit mode and then switch over to weight paint mode, we can see what we've done. When we are selected with that blend vert two, red means it has full influence, which is a value of one. And then we get all the way down to blue, which is a value of zero. So the normal information that's getting pulled to these perimeter vertices are being blended to the auto calculated normals of this mesh, and they just seamlessly blend together. So that is how we can apply a seamless blend 
between these two objects using a shrink wrap modifier and also the data transfer modifier. And I hope you found this to be a useful tutorial.